This pitch breakfast video is brought to you by Spangler and Agins. So my name is Derek Wang. I'm the associate director at the Charlotte Visualization Center, um, but I took uh, leave this year to fully devote it to my company, Taste Analytics, where we do a lot of unstructured visual analysis for corporates. So the reason why I make the shift is a lucrative job at the Viz Center, right? But then the really is we're the number one food traffic center in the whole university campus that we host Cassie Bassan from Bank of America. We host all those Lowe's executives come in and look at our research results every single day, almost for the past two years. And it gets to me and say, hey, corporates, they're missing a lot out on how they're dealing with unstructured data and what kind of insights they should be extracting from it. That's one of the motivations coming out of establishing this company for the past uh, two years already. We officially launched product earlier this year, and uh, our sales just gave back to me this morning. We have three more contracts in the pipeline. 2015 is going to look gorgeous for us. So let me dive in and tell you what's going on in, this, in our company and how we're addressing the corporate pain points. So what are we doing here, right? So a lot of you guys coming from corporate side, remember the taxonomy that your bosses or the boss's boss to ask you to build, to look into different emails, look into different social media data to understand what's going on out there? It's pain points here. You need to be 3,000 bullet constraints to get one concept. But what if people change from a full name to a hashtag? Your bullet point essentially become useless. There's no point of constructing that anymore essentially in the point of taxonomy are easy to construct, but those are preconceived knowledge that you need to know what to ask before you can actually get any insights out of it to be act upon it. We don't know what's going on there. The market is dynamic. There's a lot of things going on, especially with the new social, with the new customer complaint email coming in. Companies like SaaS, when they provide this consulting-like business, it's not going to scale in your operation. That's number one pain point that we're solving. And the second pain point is, hello, vanity metrics. Everybody look at vanity metrics in their corporate world. I got 20% more Twitter followers this month. What the heck does that mean? The executives cannot act upon that, nor do they know really how much useful information is in there. So vanity metrics are awesome. The bosses love it. It's good when you present to the CEOs of saying, hey, here's the trend. But it sucks. A lot of our Fortune 50 clients telling us is, it sucks when my boss asks me, why should I care about this? How can I drive the ROI for me next year? So those are the two areas that we're addressing. Number one, taxonomy-based tax analysis for all kinds of tax data. And the other is vanity metric for tax uh, analysis. So here comes us, taste analytics. What we're addressing is that we're looking at all sorts of data points social media data, review data, news and blogs, but more importantly, our main selling point right now is the corporate internal assets, like emails, like customer complaints, like your call center data, that nobody has a clue because it's a huge amount, and as well as so diversified, if you put a thousand analysts on it, it will take months for them to crunch it. We provide data-driven analysis method that can quickly help you review the insights, but not only that, we visually deliver all this analysis results to the end user. We don't work with IT, we work with you. We put all this on your mobile devices, Android and iPhone. We put that on your all workstations so you can have deep dive and really finding out what is actionable in your day-to-day -day life. And we made it simple. We made it exactly like it for one of our current clients is the largest PC manufacturer in the world. They just accept us POs and get all that on their tablet for their executive team. That's what we're delivering, the end users. But not, not only that, it goes to the analysts and associates as well. But I need to hurry up. So how we make money is a SaaS model going to enterprise. We also work with channel partners. Uh, we got the secure cloud deliveries and on-premises. So we're over 200,000 this year in terms of revenue, and we have 10 different clients in the pipeline for the next year. Uh, we have expecting a 400% worldwide growth in 2015, and uh, we're projecting to 12 million annual revenue on 2017. That's one of our expansion. 
Our goal is very ambitious because we're fundamentally data-driven that can capture English and other languages. So we want to expand not only in domestically, but also uh, across the ocean to the China market in the next two, three years. And uh, our growth model is that's what we're raising right now for $1 million for startup stage budget and to really rapidly grow our marketing and sales team to go to market factor, factor uh, faster and getting more clients in the 2015 area. Um, th for us to be able to accomplish this, the team is very strong. We have PhDs from data scientist team. We have senior sales from uh, uh, actually one of our previous competitors, Sisomos. We were able to get him on board. But we have a lot of uh, advisory boards that is coming with us, people from IBM Watson, people from University of High Performance Computing. So we are a computational based service company that deal with B2B for corporate level folks. And then although we have competitors, if you really want to read in here, we're the one that is providing both data driven te uh, uh, text analysis as well as interactive visualizations for corporate folks. We're helping them to address insights and business out there. Thank you. And um, that's my pitch. Thank you, Derek. Do you want to go first this time? Sure. Um, uh, Derek, you know, good presentation. Um, from a form base, you know, in your presentation, you you hit everything, you definitely hit everything you needed to hit. It, you know, it appears well thought out. You know, I expect nothing less from a, you know, big brain uh, uh, data analytics guy. Um, it, it's two, two things that, that jump out. First, first, from a sort of a presentation point of view, um, you were sort of racing. I mean, you've always got to think, how much time do I have to present? And, uh, and and what and, and your goal is not to get all the information on the slides out to you know it's to pick you know uh, a gentleman out there talk about the last presentation you know a story you know maybe uh, uh, and now where you started to go into this and it's very interesting I loved your setup you know what I heard was I'm smart I work in academia we have uh, we have large corporate customers that come in all the time and I noticed this gap in what is being provided. And that message, that's very powerful. You know, like, okay, that sounds like the basis for a company. And then, um, so I, I think you should, you should definitely key on that. Okay. Um, one word that I would get out of your vocabulary is corporate as, a, as sort of a, as, a, as a noun, you know, corporates. Uh, I, I, I don't want to be called a corporate, you know, um, but that's just a style thing. So enterprise or company? Yeah, enterprise executive, you know, something like that, not All right. corporates. Yes. You know, it's, uh, it was just awkward. But, uh, but that's not a big deal, but that was just a, a style thing. But in general, you know, the form, you know, the information that you got out, you, 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 you address the competitors, which is great, which is huge. Um, you know, the, the, you got to one of my big questions, and there's so many analytics companies out there that supposedly are product companies, but really they're consulting companies. You know, and it's, uh, and however you can show, you know, VCs, institutional people are not, gonna, even angels don't want to invest in a services company. They want to invest in a product. So repeatable process that you can come, and you definitely touched on a lot of this stuff. Maybe you just a little bit more detail about how this is, absolutely repeatable, you know, and maybe if you, you've got a story about one of your customers, but in general, I mean, I think, I think it was a really strong presentation, really, you know, I would definitely want to learn more, I think, if I, well, if I invest. saw <laughs> <laughs> We may not invest, but we'll have a meeting with you. So oh, that would be wonderful. That's right. I would take another meeting yeah. with, with you based on, based and, we're on here too, and if somebody so, yeah. sent me this, I would be like, all right, uh, like, let's, you know, let's meet them. Let's 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 see some more. Awesome. I, you, you 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 touched a lot of the bases here. Yeah, I agree. There's um, there's a lot there that's very very positive. So it's definitely um, intriguing enough to say I want to have the next meeting. This, this you know this is interesting. Um, just kind of building on what Garth said, you caught my interest when you mentioned Kathy Bassant. Now a lot of people may not know who Kathy Bassant is, but for me, I'm like that was instant credibility. I thought, okay, if he's working with Kathy Bassant, 
you know, top executive at Bank of America, that gave you instant credibility. So I think that's a positive, but you know, probably 10% of the room would be like pick up on that. So, but it is a positive. I thought your beginning story where you talked about working with corporate executives and having one of the top executives at Bank of America engaged with you and getting feedback was, was I thought, tremendous. That, that definitely drew me in. But then your first slide when you got into the taxonomies, I was like, okay, I mean, I kind of like lost you for a minute. I had to like force myself back. So um, I think, you know, I, I mean, I've worked in corporate America for years and I had no idea what you were talking about. So that, I think for, for the average investor, you might kind of lose them, then you kind of go into geek mode. Uh, whereas, you know, where you actually have like a lot of tr tremendous things that are going for you. So just focus on those things that you've got, you've got tremendous, you've got traction, you've got revenue, you've got customers giving you feedback, you've got um, major customers saying, this is a need that I'm willing to work with you versus all the other competitors. I mean, that's tremendous. I also think you've got a terrific advisory board and from an investor viewpoint, the team is one of the biggest things they're investing in, in an early stage company. I mean, it's basically market opportunity, team, and traction. Right. And you've got those, you've got all three of them. So I would, you know, agreeing with Garth, maybe get rid of some slides so you're not rushing. And on the advisory page, simplify it. Just have the name and the company. Because it was too much to read and I, I really wanted to see more about who's on that advisory team. Mm -hmm. So just name, company. Um, and then, you know, if you're going for, uh, it, you know, you said this was an investor presentation, so a little bit more on a potential takeout mm -hmm. strategy, even if it's just high level, um, just tease me a little bit about the potential takeout. Yeah. Um, and then one other comment, the, the competitive slide was also excellent, but I wanted to know more. I wanted to just... Right like savor that a little bit more. Tell me what's on those two axes. Yeah. I mean, it's perfect that you're in the right hand, you know, upper right hand <laughs> corner, page 12. Yeah, page 12, I think it was. Um, but I wanted to just dwell on it a little bit more. I mean, I thought this was terrific because you've got lots of competitors identified. I mean, I don't know who they are, but you, you clearly understand your market. But Help me understand a little bit more of those X and Y axes, because that's how you're defining your competitive differentiation. Well, let me do that now. 30 seconds, sure. I'll explain. Yeah. So essentially, the, the way of looking at this is, we're looking at the space of tax analysis, right? So a lot of companies, there's no actual tax analysis embodied into the visualization companies mm -hmm. like Tableau, like Zoom Data, which is heavily funded one, one IPO with it. Mm -hmm. But they do, do, they do not do textual analysis. And now the Y axis is all about not doing tax analysis, one is taxonomy, like term-based, Boolean stream-based tax mm -hmm. analysis, and one is the uh, data-driven analysis like we do. And on the x-axis is all menu process, automated process, and okay, then interactive got visualization got it. Got it. that okay. like I do, mm -hmm. uh, we do actually. Mm -hmm. So this is a company who just do visualization but no tax analysis. This is a company that do some taxonomy or Boolean query-based mm -hmm. tax analysis, but they don't do visualization. Mm -hmm. They don't extract useful insights for the end user. Mm -hmm. We are here that is providing end-user-driven automated tax analysis for enterprise folks. That's a great slide. It I is a great slide. Definitely allow yourself some time to go through that. You know, one way. Sorry to just no. cut in. Um, one way that you could hit Lori's uh, thing about the exit um, is um, put next to each one of those companies uh, money invested or exit. Yes. You know, Radiant mm -hmm. Six got sold to Salesforce. You know. Clara Bridge was marketing themselves at some point. Uh, a couple of those companies are public because uh, they, they're used to seeing that, you know, okay. if, particularly institutional money. They're used okay. to seeing that. Another point I wanted to make, could you go to your advisory board? Uh, okay, because I, I originally thought, I only had a second to look at it, I saw a lot of professors, you know, on there. I'm like, I think you've got that covered. Um, you, you, you might want to, Try to volunteer. Yeah, that's no, what we're. That's yeah. that's yeah. good. Yes. You know, that's Christopher good. Christopher Rossbrook, Piper Jaffray, right? You know, William Rabarsky, UNC Charlotte. You know, uh, 
I think that, that you know, it'd have more impact. Right. Yeah. They're just going to make a split second mm-hmm. sort of, you know, unless they know one of those people, which, it, but you can't always shoot for that. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a I'm just shot. getting an impression. I just, I saw a lot of professors, you yeah. know, because that's one, one thing mm-hmm. that you sort of exude. I mean, it's good. You exude smartness, you know, but you don't want to be academic. You know what I mean? Because right. uh, there's lots of PhDs that don't make it in business because they can't get out of their own way. You Absolutely. know, it's like uh, yeah. you, you need to be, you know, we're going to drive revenue. We're going to, you know, create a company, create value, and not just uh, solve interesting intellectual problems. I agree. Like, I, I rush myself, especially I want to spend more time on this. Right. If yeah. you feel like you're rushing, ever, slow down. Just slow down and just be and just get it through your head. You're like, I'm not going to make it through the slides, and that's okay. You know, like what I want to do is engage the people that are in front of me. Right. You know, you should have sort of one goal. You know, and that I I would say that it's, it's in every case it's engagement of your audience, but sort of one goal, one uber point that you want to get across, and that's your goal. Yeah. You know, it's not to get a certain amount of material out because nobody can take it in. People take in about ten percent of. It. You know, what they really take in is an impression, though. Yeah, thanks. But it's a good one of you, for sure. Let's turn to the audience then. Great presentation. Thank you. Uh, interesting idea. I, I saw the, uh, I agree with the competitive map, being a visual person, that really jumped out at me. There was a lot of information on there. The extra explanation you did just a moment ago was very helpful. Mm-hmm. And really, that gets to my main question of how are you different? You know, and, and you touched on that lightly, but you know, there was a little bit of a belief in cold fusion there in terms of a solution. Uh, how do you actually do what you talk about doing? You know, not 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 a technical explanation, but a real business explanation that I can understand in thirty seconds. So essentially what we do is we provide a service where enterprise just uh, provide us their unlooked at and structured data into our service. We do our analysis to it. And that's the piece is how do you do the analysis different than the rest of the people on that page? So it's completely data driven. Um, is, on a layman's term, what we look at is each content that coming out of all the, instru- uh, the textual information coming from your email, coming from your social media data. And then we run statistics on top of it. And then we find within that context, what is the word to word association around different uh, content in there. And then we're finding that uh, contextual level semantics and we visually represent that to the end user to consume those data, uh, data points that we're generating. So it's a statistical based engine that uses deep learning and machine learning of all the uh, input data in an unbiased and uh, scalable way. So we look at their sentiments, we look at the network effect, the net centralities of the words, and the word-to-word association in all terms of fashions. And we build that into our taste score, which is how our engine recommends how important or significant that term is inside your corpus of data. How do you become uh, knowledgeable of the question to ask and get to, drive, to look for those associations? So we fundamentally believe in the patterns that us speak in any form of textual format, maybe social or email, there's a pattern release data. Everybody say something within context. So our engine does not train, I, I don't need to train it to understand the context. It just automatically consumes the speech pattern you, have, you put into the email. Just like I was talking with Cheryl uh, just now, is their email patterns that how people write it, our engine will automatically pick up, pick those information out and then group them into the meaningful way. So it's fully data driven. Now again, if you want to have Boolean strings in there, of course, we can comment on that because that's rudimentary. But a lot of our corporate success is looking at three pain points or specifically addressing customer retention. They want to know what customer are actually talking about them in different forms or fashions. Second, product product life cycle. We'll work with product companies when they release a new product. They want to see where is the faulty uh, hinges about their product, how they should amend that. And the third is risk operation. That's where we work with the banks. They want to know where are the potential risks coming from different uh, uh, social data or email data. That, that's what they're trying to address. So it, it, 
as you know, because you and I have spoken, I'm uh, one of the members of an angel investor group. And we're just average people, right? We don't, we don't come with particular industry expertise, et cetera. And you were starting to get at it here. I would encourage you to spend a lot of time practicing your pitch to people who don't come from your domain. Because I'm confident, if you stood in front of our group today and gave that pitch, when you left the room and we talked about you, it would be, really smart guy, I don't know what he does. Right? I, I can't articulate it to anyone else. And, and, it, and it, so you were trying to do it just there. But I would, you have to do it in about one-tenth that number of words and in simpler terms, right? Help us understand the business benefit. Why does, why does Bank of America hire you, right? They hire us to solve this particular business problem, whatever that is. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't practice the pitch with other professors or people who are, you know, grad students in your department. I would find a banker, an insurance guy, um, you know, some, some lady who has a store she runs, just people who don't come from your domain, because those are the people, for, from an investment point of view, you, in the angel community, those are the people you're gonna have to be able to get to understand it and feel confident that they know what you're doing. I really like the, um, the last thing that you said. You, are, you, you named three areas, and you, you're like, we take email data, social data, you know, customer, you know, interactions that are text, and for product life cycle, uh, customer support, and, uh, and risk management. Is, I mean, is that right? Yes. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's concrete stuff. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you know, textualization and data driven, you know, that, that starts to get into the, uh, you know, it, it's, I just like the really concrete nature of what you were saying. Yeah, so actually for this deck, I didn't know what this venue is going to be look at. I was a little put it a little bit in there, but uh -huh. on our full business deck, when we send out to VCs, yep. those are the three points. We're selling on use case. We don't sell on the actual technology. That's well, great. It's, it's partially working with the enterprise folks, right? Yep. You can't right. come in and talk about that. Yeah. This is how Lowe's used it. This is how Vive or right. wh whomever. You know. the, exactly. the idea of actionable data definitely came through. You talked about executive action, actionable data. So yeah. that, that's it. Sorry, I have the mic. <laughs> 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 so, uh, I really Fight! This. I, I, like, I would be an end user, but it would have been helpful to me, maybe you can quickly explain it now, describe who your end user is, exactly how they'll use Right. Uh, yeah. Can you press uh, back a couple? So yeah, exactly. So our, um, as we were saying, we focus on the vertical that is like a pyramid, right? So from top executives to mid man man management level and end user, like the bottom level are their associates or the people who are looking at the data uh, day in day out. So those are the folks we're looking at. And if this thing does help us work, is that we deliver it at different levels of uh, uh, expertise. If it is an uh, executive, we put it this into a simple visual form on their mobile so they can start to see what are the key terms that are regarding to their product start bubbling up. So they start to see on their tablet who are the users that is for them or who are the users that are against them. So they can put some personal touch to it if their media team allows them to do that. But the middle level folks, they have the full blown deep dive workstation and they have a coverage of all different areas that can happen within their jurisdiction of the data. For example, product managers, they can look at, oh, our ice maker has a problem or, oh, our uh, military discount is a, is a problem for us. So they can start acting upon all that. So this is all end user driven. All these are interactive. So uh, the one challenge we do find is static image is hurting us. Everything in here, you can touch every element on the screen, you just press on it, and it will show you information corresponding to that. So it's a very interactive system. It's a, a kind of, a inter, that's our name is about taste. It's interplay between the human and the data results. That's what we're trying to bring it out for. So to your answer, repeating myself again, executives, managers, and uh, you know, data scientists or research associates and stuff that uh, you know, corporate uh, enterprise. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you kind of touched briefly said you have some competition in the space. Um, I'm not a tech guy, I just honestly, I'm not a tech guy. And I remember a couple of years ago, I invested pretty heavily in a tech startup. Got all into it, you know, all this funding, all this stuff. Another company comes in, basically developed the same basic product for a fraction of the cost, and I just lost a buttload of money. <laughs> so the company goes, what is your competition? What stops us from coming in, doing basically what you're doing, as good if not maybe better, but less cost effective? So where would I get my money back if I put this financial investment into this? So number one thing we're looking at here is for tech company, we cannot go out and advertise we're a tech company all the time because technology, like you said, can be repeated or duplicated. <laughs> if Google come in and spend a billion dollars, they may have the technology right off the bat. But what we firmly believe that make us have the competitive edge is our market. We have clients. We need to bunker into this and get people buy our service and start using it. The more clients we have, the less easy, uh, less diff, uh, less easy for other competitors to get squeezed out, out of the market. It's really down to the earth. Is how much market share we can get, and to the point where we grow big enough, then other competitors come in. It's not about repeating what we do, right? Technology involved. It's about how we can purchase case analytics, so we don't need to spend a billion dollars to reinvent what they have. Business is greedy. Like everybody says, it's the same. They want to look at the best optimal approach to get the new technology, but more importantly, to get the end user. That's why Salesforce bought Radiant 6. That's why all different people get purchasing all that. And one of our competitor in this sense is Parallel Structure. They just got bought by uh, uh, Palantir, which is actually a company that is only works for uh, uh, government entities. But we are looking for a big exit like that into our space as we're focusing, all our focus in 2015 is primarily on client acquisition, market share improvement. That's how we will survive, if not thrive in this area. All right, let's hear it for Derek Wang, folks. <laughs>